bountiful harvest in the month of September, a look at our new Buddha Zen garden, a tour of all our raised beds and containers, some things for you to do this month, all this and a lot more in today's episode of California Gardening. So let's begin with the harvest we made this month, beginning with bitter melon or bitter gourd. Now I'm not a big fan of this vegetable, but we did harvest a bitter gourd from our garden and this is supposed to have a lot of health benefits. And you can cook it in a lot of different ways as I've discussed in my previous videos. But overall it was a beautiful looking bitter gourd and the only one that we harvested. Moving on to butternut squash. We had our butternut squash plants growing in the last raised bed and we got a few butternut squashes from these plants. So you can see the butternut squashes, these are very easy to grow in your garden. They provide very delicious butternut squash and this is our second one. You can see that once the vine starts dying, you can harvest the butternut squash. Now let's look at our cantaloupe harvest, also called a musk melon. Now when a cantaloupe is ripe, it will just detach from the plant and you can just take it and start using it. But you can see here the cantaloupe, it looks beautiful. This was a very delicious, very sweet and juicy cantaloupe. And what we did is we just diced the cantaloupe pieces. And once that was done, you can either eat it right away, which is what we did, or you can even store it. Now, even if you harvest your cantaloupe earlier, you can keep it at room temperature for about 24 hours, and it's supposed to make it even sweeter. But here you can see our cantaloupe, it looks quite nice, and it was very delicious. And we got many more cantaloupes from this plant, you can see here. This is another one, not completely ripe. But we're going to start harvesting these since they smell so good and you can actually smell the cantaloupe flavor. And you can also stop watering your cantaloupe plant to create even sweeter cantaloupes. And all this was growing in just one whiskey barrel. And here's a harvest, beautiful looking cantaloupes. And it's really easy to grow them in containers. Moving on to cucumbers. We had a Japanese cucumber plant that was growing and it was growing along the trellis between the raised beds. And you can see the cucumber, it looks beautiful. These are very crunchy, delicious cucumbers. And now moving on to eggplants. The Black Beauty eggplant was the first variety we harvested. And the Black Beauty eggplant is another very good looking and good tasting eggplant that can be easily grown in your home garden. We also harvested our green eggplants. We had a couple of green eggplants growing in our raised beds. And you can see the eggplants, they look beautiful. And green eggplants are not only easy to grow, they also have a very unique flavor. You can see how beautiful they are. We also harvested some Indian variety eggplants. These are eggplants that we bought at a farmer's market locally here in Torrance, California. And this looked very pretty. We'll just look at how nice the eggplant looks. It has a nice striped appearance. Very beautiful looking and also very delicious. And this plant just started giving us eggplants. So I'm hoping that we get some more eggplants in the next month as well. But all in all, this plant was a pleasure to grow. Very resistant to insects and diseases. And it yielded beautiful looking eggplants as you see here. And here's one more. So you can see beautiful looking eggplants and I'm quite pleased with the results so far. Moving on to Japanese eggplants that were growing in our green stock planter. As you can see here, the green stock planter is able to grow almost any kind of plant and the Japanese eggplant is no exception. The eggplants look beautiful and they have a very unique taste. The Japanese eggplants have a very unique taste, very different from regular eggplants. And I prefer using the Japanese eggplant in a lot of Asian or Thai dishes. They taste wonderful. And the green stock planter is just an amazing planter to have in your garden. And just as a reminder, you can head over to greenstockgarden.com and use coupon code CAG to get $10 off your order and get this wonderful thing home. And the eggplants here look absolutely amazing. This is our last one. And very nice looking eggplants and overall very easy to grow. Moving on to figs. We have a mission fig tree growing in our container and this plant is just a few months old. You can already see the figs we are harvesting. 
and mission figs are extremely delicious in fact in the taste rankings mission figs rank very high up in the charts for taste and we harvested quite a few figs and you can even harvest figs earlier and then they will sweeten and ripen indoors and this is how the fig looks like after it's cut open beautiful looking fig absolutely sweet and absolutely delicious hyacinth beans the vining type hyacinth beans is one that we were growing in a container and you have seen the container almost every month now for the past couple of months the hyacinth beans the vining type hyacinth beans is an excellent producer it produces a lot of these beans that can be harvested from all over the hyacinth bean plant you can see the harvest here it looks very nice and it's not only once we were harvesting these kind of hyacinth bean pods for quite some time during the month of september you can see the hyacinth bean pods again they look beautiful and the vine type hyacinth bean is a slightly higher producer than the bush type and it also grows quite vigorously you can see it's taken over our trellis our 7 foot trellis in our container and just continues to grow bigger and bigger so i might trim down this plant later in the season but you can see it's still producing a lot of hyacinth beans and the harvest looks beautiful ivy gourd ivy gourd is a very easy to grow gourd in your home garden and the taste is very unique you have to try it out and see whether you like it or not it's sort of a salty and spicy cucumber is how i can describe it as but the ivy gourd is always eaten cooked it has a very nice flavor when cooked and our ivy gourd plants are towards the side of the last raised bed and during the summer season this plant produces abundantly we had a lot of ivy gourds that we harvested from this plant ivy gourds they just look absolutely beautiful smooth skin very nice texture and excellent taste so all in all the ivy gourd plant is something you can just grow either in a container or towards the corner of your garden and it will be happy it doesn't have a lot of requirements as far as nutrition goes and it's also pretty disease resistant kale we had a couple of curly kale plants well actually three plants that we were growing in this raised bed and we harvested a lot of kale from these plants you can see here the kale leaves they look beautiful and if you have problems with insects like aphids or worms you can just use water i just use a hose and jet spray the plants with water and that seems to take care of most of the problems with kale the caterpillars and the aphids they'll just disappear just by using water i haven't sprayed my kale plants with anything so far and you can still see the leaves look beautiful and all the three kale plants have been growing quite well we've added some mulch some compost as mulch and you can see the harvest it looks absolutely amazing moving on to lettuce we had our lettuce growing in between the tomato plants and this was our final harvest of our lettuce because it was so hot that the lettuce had started bolting but we were able to harvest almost all our lettuce now and it's always good to finish harvesting the lettuce that you planted in summer so that you can now start a fall crop if you need to so we harvested all the lettuce leaves and then we removed the lettuce plants now they were at the end of the season and you can see here the harvest it looks quite good and with a lot of lettuce harvested we thought we'll put it to good use so we made some tacos here you can see taco shells that you can buy at any grocery store or you can make your own as well but what we're doing is just stuffing in the taco with some lettuce and home grown lettuce tastes just absolutely amazing we are first layering it with lettuce and then filling it up with some chopped onions these onions were also harvested from our raised beds the red onions and then we have some tomatoes fresh tomatoes once again harvested from our garden you can see how nice the tomatoes are and they taste absolutely delicious when you harvest them fresh from your garden
and then we'll be adding some cilantro fresh cilantro once again that we were growing indoors we harvested a lot of cilantro as you might have seen in my previous monthly video so we had saved up a lot of cilantro to use for quite some time now the final two things you need to add are some salt spices and flavor so we're just adding this taco sauce that we got with the taco shells incidentally and also some taco seasoning the taco seasoning adds a lot of zest and flavor to your tacos and this is a very easy very healthy snack that you can eat and here you can see the tacos they look absolutely amazing and you can add other fillings like meats or beans as you want it but we just ate the tacos fresh like these and they were absolutely delicious luffa you might have seen our luffa plant for quite some time now they have been growing on our trellis the arbor that we built between the raised beds and we harvested quite a lot of luffas from these plants now the luffas are absolutely delicious when you harvest them tender they have a very unique taste and it's hard to describe but if you've eaten luffas they taste very similar to ridge gourds the ridge gourds have a little bit of ridge on their skin this one doesn't but the taste is very very similar in fact i sometimes prefer the taste of luffa over the ridge gourd and you can see they might be slightly darker green in color or they might be slightly yellowish but either ways these are excellent quality luffas that you can harvest from your garden and the luffa plant is an abundant producer it produced a lot of luffas and what did we do with our harvest we made some luffa curry as you can see here with lot of spices and it was absolutely delicious and now for my favorite part of the harvest for september mangoes we had our little gem mango plant that was growing it's about maybe around a foot or two very small plant but it's a dwarf plant so even on maturity it reaches just about 5 to 6 feet and you can see the mangoes they look amazing and the little gem mango is one mango variety that i really like just for its taste these are extremely delicious mangoes it's a very sweet mango it has almost no fiber and it also looks good you can see here the mangoes they are almost ripe and we are just going to be ripening them a little bit more to make it sweeter before we eat it and to ripen mangoes you can just keep them in a bag of rice and you can see the mango here it looks quite good it's very sweet and delicious almost no fiber and the sweet orange flesh is very nice mint we were growing our mint in our one whiskey barrel container and to harvest mint you can just trim the mint tops and harvest them and get a decent harvest so depending on what you're using this for you can either get a small harvest like this one and if you're using your mint for something that requires a lot of mint like a big volume of mint you can harvest even more and i usually use our mint harvest time to also prune our mint plant you want to make sure that your mint plant is pruned well you can see the harvest it also has some flowers as you can see here because it's quite hot and the mint will produce some flowers but it doesn't affect its flavor in any way so all in all we were able to harvest a lot of mint and now let's look at our okra harvest We harvested a lot of baby baba okras. These baby baba okras were growing in our whiskey barrel container. And this is the first year we are trying out the baby baba okra and the harvest continued into this month. The harvests are pretty good. The okras are quite slender, quite delicious as well. And for those of you who missed the last episode, just a quick overview of the baby baba okra is that it is a dwarf okra. variety it doesn't get too tall it does develop into a nice bushy plant and it does produce a lot of okras as you see here now the baby baba okra is a dwarf okra that is very easy to grow in containers we highly recommend this okra variety if you're growing it in containers and similar to the nombo giant okra this okra variety is resistant to a lot of insects a lot of diseases and it does produce abundantly 
and this is one okra variety that's also delicious the pods are extremely nice very flavorful pods and you can look at the harvest these are pretty good harvests here and we were able to harvest a lot of okras almost every day from this okra plant and remember to harvest your okras when they are tender and not too mature that way they'll have the best flavor so overall we were very happy growing the baby baba okra it was a fantastic crop that we really enjoyed growing throughout the growing season and now moving on to our emerald okra variety the variety that we were growing in our raised beds and we were growing a lot of plants on our raised beds and the emerald okra variety although a relatively difficult plant to grow produces lovely okras as you see here the emerald okras have a classic shape that you can see here they are a little thicker and have some defined ridges along the edges and these are very delicious okras though fresh emerald okras taste very nice so if you are planning to grow this variety in larger areas this is one variety that does grow well if you are growing a lot of plants but for smaller areas and for smaller containers there are some other okra varieties that we saw the baby baba okra and also the nombo giant that we'll soon see are slightly better okra varieties if you are restricted on space but all in all the emerald okra was also a joy to grow the taste was quite good and now the nombo giant okra our favorite okra variety to grow easily grown in containers produces large okra pods as you see here was another abundant producer for september as well now we left most of the seeds to mature on the plant for seeds and we then harvested all the tender okras moving on to onions we had our red onions growing in our first raised bed you might have seen the progress of growing these onions in the past few months and they were now ready for harvest so you can see we have a few onions here that we are harvesting and the tops have fallen over these onions are ready for harvest and i usually eat this onion just as a salad just raw chopped up and it tastes amazing but you could use this onion in any way you want and just look at the onions they are pretty good not huge bulbs but decently sized bulbs that are very flavorful and you can cure these onions you can dry them for some time and store them i usually harvest my onions and then use them right away but if you want to store these onions you can definitely dry them in the sun and then cure them and then store them for many weeks or even many months and i am chili peppers you can see the apocalyptic light that's there in the background and this was due to the california wildfires and it was almost yellow the sunlight was almost non existent you can see the sun that's pretty much hidden in the clouds but coming back to our anaheim pepper harvest this is an amazing pepper variety these peppers are extremely delicious the plant produces a lot of peppers very prolific plant and one of our highly recommended plants to grow in the peppers category and you can see here the peppers are quite large very nicely formed peppers and you can harvest them green or you can wait for them to mature they turn into a red color but either way you can't go wrong with the anaheim chili pepper it is just a wonderful pepper variety not too spicy but still has a little bit of spice which is what makes it very unique a very nice pepper variety now if you're near a wildfire area in california i hope you're safe and everything is fine in the month of september the few days that we had the wildfire gloom so to say was pretty bad you could actually look outside and it seemed that the world is ending it's almost like a feeling from a movie scene or something it was pretty bad however i hope all of you are safe and doing well moving on to our hot banana peppers we had a lot of banana peppers that were growing in our peppers bed and we harvested a large amount of peppers and even after we harvested all these peppers the pepper produced a second burst of peppers and that was due to the compost tea and the worm tea that we added to these pepper plants which i'll shortly discuss 
But you can see here, we are back harvesting some more peppers. And these are excellent quality peppers. And you can see here, once again, the pepper plants have produced another burst of peppers, banana peppers. And these look very nice. So yes, a nutrient boost for your pepper plants towards the end of the season will cause it to give you a quick round of peppers once again. And that's always good to see. You get to harvest another round of peppers. And these peppers are slightly spicy, not too spicy, but more spicy than your bell pepper or even compared to the Anaheim chili pepper. Our final candy cane peppers were harvested. This is the final harvest before the pepper plant stopped producing any more candy cane peppers. So overall, it was a good season for the candy cane peppers as well. We did harvest a lot of candy cane peppers. Moving on to hot peppers. We had our bird's eye chili pepper growing in our green stock container. You can see the bird's eye chili pepper. They are quite prolific. Very hot peppers. Extremely hot in fact. And you can see the peppers here. Amazing peppers. They keep producing a lot of peppers. And this was another one of our recommended pepper varieties for hot peppers. And you can look at the harvest here. It looks good. And cayenne peppers. We also harvested a lot of hot cayenne peppers that were growing in our raised beds. And we had a few plants in the raised bed. And you can see the cayenne peppers. They are quite good looking. They produce quite well. And this is the heirloom variety that I have been growing for many years now. You can see the peppers. They look quite beautiful. And they may even look lighter green in color as you see here. Or a darker green as you saw previously. But all in all, this cayenne pepper variety that produces a lot of cayenne peppers is not only a flavorful pepper producer, but also is an abundant producer. So I'll definitely be saving seeds for this pepper variety so that I can grow these in the future. The harvests are also quite beautiful and quite nice. Giant Marconi peppers. These peppers were another surprisingly well producers for this season. And we harvested a couple more peppers from this plant. And this pepper plant has produced a lot of peppers already. So September is the last month for this plant. And we will likely be removing the plant after that. Jalapenos. One of my favorite pepper varieties to grow. Produces hot jalapeno peppers. Hot peppers that are extremely delicious. And we were able to harvest a lot of jalapeno peppers from this plant. The plant is still going strong even in September. So we might either keep it for some time or we might remove it if it starts slowing down. But all in all, the jalapeno pepper variety was a prolific producer as well. And also one of my favorite peppers due to the heat content in it. Extremely nice pepper to grow and eat. You can see the harvest here. It looks amazing. Mad Hatter Pepper. This was a new pepper variety that we tried out for the first time this year. Part of the Harvest Select series by Bonnie Plants. And you can see the pepper. They look quite good. Looks like a hat. Actually looks like a hat. And these are sweet peppers with a very good flavor. In fact, these peppers are used in a lot of Peruvian dishes, which gives the Peruvian dishes a nice flavor, a very unique flavor. And you can see how beautiful these peppers are. They're just amazing quality peppers that produced a lot. And this was also growing in our green stock garden. And these are excellent quality peppers. Poblanos. If you want a pepper that's the perfect combination between heat and taste, look no further than the poblano peppers. We use a lot of poblano peppers in a wide variety of dishes. This is an amazing pepper variety that produces quite good sized peppers as you see here. Beautiful looking poblano peppers and something that I might grow next year as well. Now we did not get a whole lot of poblano peppers, but for two plants, it was still a decent harvest that we got. So overall, I'm happy with the way the poblano peppers grew. Romanesco. One of our most interesting harvests this season. And this is something that I have been trying to grow for a long time, but was unsuccessful. But this time we got a really big Romanesco head. You can see here. And it's hard to describe the taste of the Romanesco. It's more like a cross between 
the taste of a broccoli and a cauliflower. It's quite crunchy, quite nice to eat. And I'm so glad that we grew this plant because this tastes amazing. The way we prepare this Romanesco is just like how we stir fry cauliflowers. And you can see here, this is the dish we made out of our Romanesco. Just stir fried it with spices and it was absolutely delicious. The leaves of the Romanesco plant are also edible and they can be used for a wide variety of dishes. Tomatoes. The first set of tomatoes we harvested from our garden were growing in our green stock planter. This is the harvest select series of tomatoes that are quite good. Produces large tomatoes as you see here. And these were quite nice tasting tomatoes all from our green stock garden planter. We were also growing the chocolate stripes tomato and you can see here the tomatoes they look quite good and there are still a lot of tomatoes on our green stock planter that are growing both the regular sized one as well as the chocolate stripes tomato. And moving on to our raised beds the tomatoes that we were growing on the raised beds we still got a large number of tomatoes that we harvested from our raised beds. The cherry tomatoes had slowed down but the larger tomatoes like the Salsa tomato and the Bonnie Select tomato, they were growing quite well. You can see the tomatoes, they are quite good, well sized tomatoes. And I was glad that we could harvest this all the way into September. And the plants are still growing strong. Watermelon. This is the ice box watermelon that was growing on our trellis. And we finally harvested our first watermelon. You can see here, you can easily twist it off the plant and the watermelon looks quite good. Now it's important to harvest your watermelon at the right time. Make sure that the tendril on top has dried out. And let's look at how our watermelon is. Is it ripe or is it not ripe yet? So are you ready? This is how it looks like and this is a perfect looking watermelon. It's not overripe. Overripe watermelons have this mushy part in the center. But you can see that this watermelon is not like that. It's quite well formed and this was a really sweet watermelon that was also amazing in taste. Zucchinis. We were growing three black beauty zucchini plants in our whiskey barrel container. And we harvested some zucchinis this month. You can see the zucchini that's quite large. It's quite a large zucchini that you see here. And the black beauty zucchini is absolutely flavorful as well. These zucchinis are easy to grow and they produce excellent harvests. You can see one more that we harvested from our plant. So overall, I think the plant produced quite good zucchinis and is continuing to produce more zucchinis as we go into October. And now let's take a tour of the gardens, starting with the Buddha Zen garden that we have. The Buddha area is one that you have probably seen in the past, but not fully. But this is our Zen garden that is not completely done yet. But I'll show you how this place looks like. We have a combination of a lot of shrubs, plants and flowers in this area. You can see a lot of beautiful flowers. And this is our Buddha statue. It looks quite beautiful. It has two water features. One on the top of the head of the Buddha. And one towards the hand. And you can see it is quite a serene place. You can actually hear the water trickling down. It gives a very nice zen kind of feeling to your garden and we are very glad that we got this place set up it just gives a totally new dimension to the garden you can see a lot of tropical flowers and roses and all these annuals and perennials around the zen garden and this zen garden is right in front of our california room as you see here quite a beautiful look from our california room so all in all, I just wanted to give you a quick tour of the Buddha Zen garden and I hope you liked it. And now let's look at our raised beds where we have most of our vegetables growing. In the first raised bed, you can see the green eggplants. These green eggplants grew quite well. You saw the harvest that we made for these green eggplants. They were quite nice and we still have a few more eggplants growing here. We also have some ash gourd plants. The ash gourds are quite literally all around the raised bed. 
by producing this really big ash code that you see here. And the watermelon as well, the icebox watermelon, you can see it here. It looks quite good. It's quite big actually now and will be ready for harvest very soon. On the trellis, you can see the loofah plants have taken over and we got quite a lot of loofahs from this plant or these plants. And you can see some more just waiting to be harvested. And the loofah plant is actually in the raised bed. The roots are in the raised bed. It's just grown all the way into the trellis. And you can see all these other white onion plants, the bunching onions that we separated. And there are some more red onions that are waiting to be harvested. So on the first raised bed, we do have the watermelons on one side and all the loofah plants on the other side. And they're both growing very well on the trellis. Here is a closer look at the ash gourd. Quite beautiful. The watermelon that should be ready for harvest in about a couple of weeks. And the tomato plant, this is the beefsteak tomato that's also using the trellis and growing quite well. And this is how the trellis looks like between the two raised beds, quite dominated by the loofahs. And looks quite beautiful, very good usage of the space that we had. And on the second bed, we removed all our okras, the emerald okras. We still kept a couple and this is a tropical melon plant that we still kept. Although it doesn't look too healthy, we thought we'll just give it a chance to produce some melons. And the okra plants you see here, these are the four that we left. But we removed most of the emerald okra from this raised bed. The cucumber plant, this is a Japanese cucumber plant. You saw the harvest we made from this plant. There are a few more cucumbers still growing on this plant, which we'll be harvesting soon. These are our groundnuts or peanuts. The peanut plant is still growing and yet to mature, but we should have peanuts very soon. And in the rest of the bed, we are planning to plant some onions. They will be planted soon. And the beans, these are the kidney bean plants, which we are waiting for the pods to mature. You can see a lot of pods here, but kidney beans are not eaten like this. You have to wait till the pod matures and then harvest the kidney beans when they are dry. And you can see some bitter gourds or bitter melon plants that are climbing on the other side of the trellis. And you can see a small bitter melons being formed. A few right there. And we did harvest a bitter melon from this plant already, but there are still some more that are growing and we should be able to harvest these soon. Moving on to our third bed, which looks quite different, we added hoops, PVC hoops on this uh, raised bed. And in the to-do section, which is up next, I will show you how to create these PVC hoops and create this kind of a net cover that we have used here to protect our brassicas. Or you can even use a plastic sheet to protect your plants from frost. So either ways, you can't go wrong with the PVC hoops. And we'll show you how to make them very soon. We have a lot of cauliflower plants that are growing inside this raised bed, as well as some broccoli and some pepper plants towards the other side. And the trellis has been taken over by the ridge gourd plants. The ridge gourd plant has grown quite tall, quite large. No ridge gourds yet on this plant, but you can see how dense and how big the plant has grown. And the tomatoes on the other side are using this trellis as well. You can see the tomatoes, the plants are looking quite good now. They get a second burst of energy sometime during September and they produce tomatoes. You can see a few tomatoes here, the cherry tomatoes. The production is not as high as in summer, but they might produce some more tomatoes in the upcoming month. So we're going to keep our tomato plants as is, let them use the trellis, let them grow here and see how the harvests look like. But overall, the tomato plants have grown quite well. 
And in the final bed, we have our longevity spinach that is looking quite good, much better than last month. And one jalapeno pepper plant that we kept. The sunchoke plant is producing these wonderful flowers you can see here. And it has grown quite tall. It's literally taken over this raised bed. And it's a little concerning to me because the whole raised bed is actually taken up by these sunchokes as you see here. Almost all the raised bed. So I have to dig up these plants quite soon. But I think they still have some time to mature. So I'm going to wait for some time. But you can see the flowers. They look quite beautiful. And the plants are huge. There is another Romanesco plant that's in the center. Some kale that we harvested this month as you saw. And then our taro root plants which are ready for harvest any time now. I will be harvesting them very soon. And on the back we have our ivy gourd plant. That is growing quite well producing a lot of ivy gourds. And they will continue to produce ivy gourds this month as well. So that was a tour of our raised bed garden. Let's now move over to our containers. In our container garden we have these onions. This is a bunch of onions that we separated and planted in this whiskey barrel container. Followed by the black beauty eggplant. You can see here that it's producing quite well. Nice looking eggplants here. There's another one on the back. So looking quite good. And in the third container we have planted taro root plants, taro plants. You can see one plant is already emerging. There are about four more plants in this container. Followed by carrots. We sowed some carrot seeds here in this container. Some of them have germinated already. And this is the winter radish that we sowed. You might have seen the progress of this radish. Look at the radish being formed. This is just beginning to get formed. It will still take some time for this radish to mature. And Malabar spinach. You can see the Malabar spinach plants using the trellis. They have grown quite big now. So this trellis is working out quite well for the Malabar spinach plant. And we have our Indian eggplant. This is the striped pink eggplant that you saw in the harvest section and we harvested a few eggplants here and there are a few more eggplants that are growing this is a very delicious eggplant highly recommended if you can find this variety we found this at the farmers market in Torrance California and it was quite good and now we have the baby baba okra plant you can see the baby baba okra plant it looks quite good there are a lot of okra plants in this one whiskey barrel container and which is why I was quite happy with how it grew. Spinach. We planted the pale green spinach plants in this container. You can see here the plants look quite good. And we'll cover this in the planting section of the video. And the hyacinth bean. This is the vining type hyacinth bean plant. That has taken over the trellis completely. And has produced a lot of hyacinth beans. I'm going to be leaving some of these hyacinth beans to go to seed so that I can save the seeds. A lot of you have asked me seeds for the vining type hyacinth beans. And these are the Anaheim chili peppers. You can see the plant is slowly dying now, slowly beginning to slow down. But it does have a lot of peppers that we will harvest. And sometime this month I think we'll have to change it to some other plant in this container. We have some pea plants. These are the dwarf pea plants that are growing. And we are using a very simple bamboo trellis in this container. And I will explain in the to do section how to create this easy trellis as well. We have some more carrots in the next container. We sowed some carrot seeds last month and they have all germinated. Well most of them germinated. And you can see the plants here. And then we have the zucchini plant that gave us quite a lot of zucchinis as you saw. We have three plants growing here and it's actually growing in quite a crowded way now. But you can see these zucchinis, they are quite good. Some more zucchinis coming up. And this is the heirloom black beauty zucchini variety. 
We then have our millionaire eggplant. It is producing quite a lot of eggplants now and we should be able to harvest some eggplants next month. And it has a ton of blooms on it, a lot of blooms on this plant. And a lot of these should get converted to eggplants which we should be able to harvest very soon. Our Nombo giant okras have been left to produce seeds. Most of these pods will produce seeds that I will save. And we are harvesting the tender ones as and when they come up. And this is the ivy gourd plant. You can see the ivy gourd plant. It is climbing on this trellis, the newly created trellis, bamboo trellis. And this is a new plant that I just got from a friend and I'm trying to grow this in this container. We have the mint plant growing in the container on the other side. It's quite lush and quite green. Followed by the java plum tree that's growing in this big whiskey barrel container. We then have a turkey berry plant that hasn't produced any berries yet. But I'm just hoping it will produce berries one day. Followed by the curry leaf plant that has a lot of new growth as you see here. And is also producing a lot of seeds and a lot of leaves. And finally, the goji berry plant. Now, I'm not too happy growing the goji berry plant. I tasted a couple of fruits and they had a very peculiar flavor. But I was told that this fruit is supposed to be dried and eaten. So, I'll try that out sometime. Let's now move over to a green stock planter. We have some Japanese eggplants growing on the green stock planter and they look quite good. We also have some tomatoes. These are the chocolate striped tomatoes. And the Mad Hatter pepper that's growing quite well as well. Followed by some bird's eye chili pepper, some more tomatoes on the top. So overall a lot of different plants growing on the green stock garden planter. There are some strawberries as well, some eggplant, some basil. Towards the bottom we've planted some onions. You can see we have three onions per opening of this vertical garden or vertical planter. And overall the planter is looking quite good. The plants are looking nice. This is the lemon balm. Some dragon cayenne peppers also growing on this green stock planter. So all in all I think I'm quite happy with the way my plants are growing in the green stock planter. And this is how it looks like. And finally, let's look at some things for you to do in your garden this month, starting with preparing hoops for raised beds. We got four 10 foot PVC pipes from our hardware store. You can get it at any hardware store, as well as eight 2 foot rebars. And this is all you'll really need to set up hoops for your raised beds. And this is our area that we are going to be setting up our hoops on, the PVC hoops. We measured eight feet to cut our PVC pipes. Now you can use 10 foot PVC pipes as well. But that would give you larger hoops, quite large actually. And 6 feet were too small. So we arrived at 8 feet as the optimal size for our raised beds after some trial and error. But this should give you an idea on how your hoops will look like. These are our 8 foot PVC pipes. We have 4 of them. You can go with 3 as well. But we went with 4. The first step is to hammer the rebars on all sides where you're planning to put the PVC hoops. So we're going to be putting one here at the corner. And then we have divided this into three larger areas. So we'll be putting this at 35 inches from the first one. And then doing the same thing, hammering it down so that it's about a foot visible from the outside. You don't want a lot of rebar to be visible outside. Otherwise, it's very difficult to push the PVC pipes in. And then we do the same thing for the other rebar. Just measure 35 inches and then hammer it into the ground. And you do the same thing with the next PVC pipe as well. Just hammer it down so that it's about a foot up. And you need to do the same thing on the other side of the raised bed as well. Now you can see that it's a little cumbersome to do this through the trellis. But I was able to push my hand through the trellis opening and then push down the rebar. So you can see here all the rebars have been now installed. There are eight of them opposite to each other where the PVC hoops will go. And this is the 
easier part of installing the hoops. The rebars are quite sturdy as you can see. And now we just slide in the PVC pipe on one end into the rebar. And once it touches the surface of the soil, you just bend it over. And on the other side, this is where it gets a little tricky. You need to hold it in a way that it will slide over the rebar. And you can push the rebar around to get to pushing the PVC pipe through. But the PVC pipe should slide in eventually. The PVC pipe, the half inch PVC pipe is rigid, but it's not too rigid so you can slide it into the rebar. And this is how it looks like, quite sturdy. These PVC hoops, all of them installed now, can be used on your raised beds to either protect your plants from insects, diseases, as well as protect your plants from frost. So all in all, this is a great way to add PVC hoops to your garden. And you can buy any kind of material to top off your PVC hoops. In our case, we used netting to prevent insects from getting into the raised bed. Moving over to planting. As you saw, we sowed some spinach seeds last month. And you can see the spinach plants, the seedlings are now quite large and ready to be transplanted. Which is what we are doing here. We are transplanting all the spinach seedlings into this whiskey barrel container. Now you can plant them as a bunch, but I like to separate the spinach plants this way, the way you are seeing it here, so that they develop larger leaves. Now you can plant a lot of plants quite close to each other, but the spacing that you see here is quite optimal for growing large spinach plants that produce quite large leaves. So we'll see how these plants grow. But you can see here we can plant up to seven plants or even more in this one whiskey barrel container. So we ended up planting nine plants in this whiskey barrel container and they should give it enough space for it to grow and thrive. We're adding back our drip irrigation lines and then the last step now is to water the plants. So water your plants thoroughly, water your seedlings thoroughly after you plant them. It's a very important step that you should not miss. We're also sowing some carrot seeds. These carrot seeds are very easy to sow. This is the Sow Easy series where the seeds are pelleted. So you can sow these seeds at exact locations. But having said that, carrot seeds have very poor germination rates in my opinion, very similar to onions. But carrot seeds might have lower germination rates depending on the seed variety. So although it's easy to sow these seeds and then just push it into the soil a little bit, not all of these may germinate. But all in all, I think this is still a clever solution. It lets you grow a lot of plants very easily. Sowing the seeds becomes less of a challenge with this approach. And now let's look at our easiest trellis that you can build for a container. We got six foot bamboo stakes from our garden center. This is from Home Depot. And all you do is just place these six bamboo stakes onto your container, just like you see here. And these are six foot tall, so they will provide quite a good amount of room for your plants to grow. And then it's as easy as just collecting all the tops of the sticks and then tying them together with a thread. And make sure that you tie securely on the top. I usually do a double knot just to make sure that the top of the trellis is secure. And that is it. That's all you really need to do. This is the easiest trellis you can make in no time at all. So if you have container plants and are looking for an easy way to support your plants, look no further than this trellis. It's a very easy trellis to make. And this is how our container trellis looks like. You can see it's quite tall. It will help you support the plants very well. And you just tie the plant to the sides of the stakes and it will grow all the way through this trellis. Now let's look at how to feed your plants using an enhanced worm tea. This month I prepared worm tea by brewing not only worm tea but also fish emulsion and seaweed and I added a handful of compost into my compost tea as well or this tea that we are making and this results in a very nutrient rich solution. It has a lot of beneficial bacteria and you just drench your plants just like you see here and this will add a lot of valuable nutrients to the soil and increase microbial activity in your soil. And pepper plants seem to benefit the most from this kind of foliar feeding as well as feeding the soil. 
So it's a great way to add a lot of nutrients in organic gardening. So there we have it folks, that was our episode of the California Gardening September monthly episode. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.